Welcome everybody to the second day of the ESPAS conference for 2018. It's a great pleasure to see so many of you uh, here this morning. Uh, I'd like in particular to thank Anne Mettler, who uh, choreographed yesterday's events, which I think were a great success over the Berlimont. Uh, the Commission puts a huge amount of effort into the ESPAS process, and Anne is a wonderful chair of it. And I think on behalf not only of the European Parliament, uh, but all the partners in the ESPAS process, we'd like to say a big thank you to her for all her efforts, which we really appreciate. Uh, you're supposed to be hearing at this moment from Klaus Weller, the Secretary General of the European Parliament. He's asked me to stand in for him. Uh, he was asked to uh, meet with the President at, uh, at 9 o'clock, and uh, he's hoping to join us later on, and he'll certainly be here for the closing session, where we'll be setting the scene with a number of the highest level officials of the European Union about the future and contribution of the ESPAS process. Now, we have uh, before us, I think, a very interesting and potentially thought-provoking uh, set of sessions uh, in this second uh, day. I'm just going to very briefly run through them for those of you who haven't had the chance to look at the program. Uh, it basically falls into uh, sort of three main parts. For the first part of the morning, we're setting the scene, and we're doing that in two ways. We're doing it uh, with the Vice President of the European Parliament responsible for the uh, ESPAS process, among other things, uh, Luis Varcathel, to talk about um, thinking about the future ESPAS and global trends to 2030. Uh, and then we're really delighted to have uh, one of the most prominent, uh, uh, not only scientists, but I would say public intellectuals, on issues to do with technology, science, and the future, and the way the world is changing, uh, Professor Lord Martin Rees, who's uh, come over from uh, Cambridge to give a keynote address on uh, global governance and the Anthropocene age potential and limitations. And I think we are really very privileged uh, to have him here this morning uh, to uh, present his latest thinking, uh, including reflections uh, relating to his new book, On the Future, Prospects for Humanity, uh, to us here in the ESPAS process. The second set of sessions, which span uh, before and after lunch, are related, if you like, to the core ongoing work of the ESPAS process. Uh, one is uh, economy and society in 2030, before lunch, and the second, global power in 2030. Uh, and as you probably recall, um, the ESPAS process at the moment is in the is in the process of putting together its five-year report. In the course of the first quarter of next year, probably in March, uh, ESPAS will issue a document to be entitled Global Trends to 2030, uh, Challenges and Choices for Europe. And this event, uh, several other events which ESPAS has organized, quite a lot of material which has either been generating uh, internally or has commissioned externally, and you can see some of those uh, outside in the presentoir, feed into this process whereby a report will be authored on our behalf by Florence Gaub, the Deputy Director of the EU Institute for Security Studies in Paris. And it is designed to set the scene, inform, provide the backdrop uh, and analytical tools necessary for the new office holders coming into the EU institutions next year, because as all of you will know in this room, next year is a very important moment in the institutional cycle of the European Union, the new European Parliament, the new European Commission, including, of course, the separately elected president of the European Commission, and, of course, a new uh, president of the uh, European Council and uh, high representative. So to prepare the ground for those important changes of personnel, uh, we're undertaking this report, uh, which uh, the discussions today are designed to contribute towards. So please see the discussion on the economy and society in 2030 and global power in 2030 as part of that ongoing uh, process. And the third part uh, of today's proceedings, grouped together in four successive sessions starting at 3.45 this afternoon, are really an opportunity to talk about the ESPAS process itself and global foresight. Um, the ESPAS Young Talent Network, some of our best and brightest of younger officials in the European institutions will be talking about what they uh, have been doing and how they see the future because they will be the people after all who live the future that we're talking about. We'll then have a, a general wider discussion from practitioners of the foresight community about what foresight is and the contribution that it can make to policy making, foresight thinking about tomorrow today. We'll then take stock of what the ESPAS process has done so far since its invention under James Ellis's leadership uh, almost a decade ago. 
Uh, and then finally, um, chaired by James, Klaus Feller, Jim Close, uh, Anne Mettler, uh, and uh, Christian Leffler, in fact, from the EAS, will come together to talk about the way that that concept, if you like, of foresight now interacts with the way that the uh, EU institutions are operating as they go forward. So that's the context and outline of today's uh, program. Uh, I hope we all have a really stimulating discussion. Thank you for being here in such numbers and look forward to following this very closely.